celebration of today's historic NASA launch, I am at Devil's Gate. Named so because of this dude right behind me right here. You can see his horn up there. And this right here is actually the beginning of not only SpaceX and NASA, NASA and JPL, but the entire American space program. Because at this spot, Jack Parsons, the father of American aeronautics, tried to summon the devil. Jack Parsons is a name that American history wish you forgot. Jack Parsons was the son of a very well-to-do family in Pasadena, California. His family quickly lost all of their riches, and although he had a very privileged educational background in the beginning, he did not have enough money to support himself to go to school. So self-taught, he decided that he wanted to attend lectures here at nearby Caltech, and in doing so met a group of other graduate students at Caltech and together formed what they called the Suicide Squad. The Suicide Squad, they basically were trying to figure out how to be able to work with rockets. And they did this really, really well. Their experiments were very dangerous, but it led to some really big advances. And this got the attention of the U.S. government. The U.S. government came, talked to this group of ragtag individuals, the Suicide Squad, and they decided, you know what, we're going to give you some money. money, And that's how the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, or JPL, was founded here in Pasadena. Um, one of the reasons why this spot is so important to that history is because Caltech, they couldn't do the experiments there, so they actually came to this canyon, and this canyon was always known as Devil's Canyon because of homeboy behind me over here, and this is where they actually began their first experiments. So we are standing on the ground of the origins of the American space movement. Jack Parsons was a very, very controversial figure. Uh, people forget that back in the early 20th century, uh, space exploration was not seen as being a very Christian thing. Why? Because according to all religions, God lived in the sky, right? Jack Parsons became increasingly connected to the occult and spiritual thinking. Early on, once he had finally gotten a bunch of money, etc., he decided to convert to Aleister Crowley's Thelema theology, which has its origins in demonology, Eastern practice, Eastern spiritualism, etc. And through this spirituality began to practice something known as sex magic. Sex magic is the belief that through the act of sex, in that moment of orgasm, you are momentarily connected to the universe. And in that instant, you can request something from the universe in return. It's basically like a sexed up version of the secret, uh, but he really believed in this. And Jack Parsons was able to attract a wide number of individuals who would also ascribe to this, this tenet and this belief system. One of those individuals we know and love as the father of Scientology, L. Ron Hubbard. L. Ron Hubbard was one of the frequent guests to the Parsons sex magic orgies, etc. One of the reasons why was because Jack Parsons, when he was a kid, was super into science fiction. And the fact that L. Ron Hubbard was a science fiction writer made him very uh, cool to <laughs> Jack Parsons. Little did he know, though, that L. Ron Hubbard is definitely a chubby, disgusting wolf in chubby, disgusting sheep's clothing. Um, and L. Ron Hubbard actually ended up stealing both uh, Jack Parsons' wife and also $20,000 to move to Florida to start a boat company company which would eventually become Sea Org. So everything comes full circle. But this spot over here is actually one of the many spots that Jack Parsons tried to summon a demon by the name of Babylon who in his estimation would be the mother of the moon child who would bring forth sexual liberation in America. Currently Hell's Gate is a place of local folklore I mean, most people just come here because there are a lot of urban legends of voices coming from the tunnel. But one of the reasons why that is is because the tunnel actually has really great acoustics and it carries voices. So the closer that I get to it, you can start to hear the echo. And it's actually very well pronounced. But if you're unaware of that and you walk by, 
it sounds as if voices are coming out from within the tunnel, which is what most people think. Uh, there are legends of child sacrifices and a mother killing her child in the tunnel, and it's, it's haunted by them. This story, this story actually ends really horribly for Jack Parsons. After the notoriety of his sex magic parties became known to others, he lost his position at JPL, which ends up becoming NASA, and he is has to resort to working at a gas station just to be able to survive. He also starts renting out rooms in his house and is basically penniless at the end. He gets a offer from a Hollywood production to create some explosives for the film and he readily accepts, but in doing the in creating the the, the explosives for the film, he ends up accidentally setting some off burning off half his face and dying as a result of his injuries. Jack Parsons is the name that most people in American history have decided to uh, quietly leave out of the conversation, even though he is one of the founders of the modern America today and is the creator of the space system that we know and enjoy so much technology from. Stalin say like and subscribe.